Hey there, everyone, and welcome back to Stuff in Excel. You know, often uh, you've got division managers sending you information, you've got franchisees sending you information, you've got people sending you different information from out in the field. Now, it's all formatted the same, and it's all got the same basic information in it, uh, but you need to be able to combine all those different files into a single pivot table. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to do that in Excel. Okay, well, welcome back. And what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at this particular data file. Now, this data file is available to you. If you go into the description section for the video, there's a link to this video where you can download it and follow along with what I'm going to show you. So in this file, let's take a look at the data. We've actually got six different files that I've already put into the same workbook. So I've got worksheets for 2023 close, 2024 close, 2023 driveway salt, 2024 driveway salt, 2023 snowblowers, and 2024 snowblowers. So what we have here is monthly sales revenue, cost of goods sold, distribution cost, SG&A cost, facilities cost, and net income for every month for 2023 and 2024 for each of the three divisions for this company. What we need to do is run all of this data together uh, into a single pivot table. Uh, but I don't want to necessarily put it all on the same worksheet. So how do we do that? Well, surprisingly, many years ago, Excel had a tool that was included uh, up here in the ribbon uh, that allowed you to combine pivot tables. But it doesn't, it, that, too, that tool went away, but it's still available. It's called the Pivot Table and Pivot Chart Wizard. So how do we get that? Well, I have my customized ribbon here, and I'm going to click on this, and I'm going to now go down. I'm going to look for more commands, and let me actually invoke the uh, magnifier here. So I'm going to go up here and click on this button here. I'm going to go down to uh, more commands, and then over here, I'm going to go to all commands, and I'm going to scroll down to um, Within this, I'm going to scroll way down to the piece. I went past them. I uh, go to, I hope I can get there. There we go. Here's the pivot table items. And the one I'm looking for is this one right here pivot table and pivot chart wizard. That's the one I want to add to my customized uh, bar up here. So I'm going to tick, click on that, and then I'm going to go around and I'm going to add it. And you see, and not only put it here, but it is now, when I say OK, you notice it's not up here right now, right? But when I click OK, it adds it right up here. And there's my pivot table and pivot chart wizard that we can use. And we can use this to combine uh, different worksheets into a single pivot table. So I'm going to turn off this magnifier. So we've got this data, and what we're going to do is we're just going to turn on this wizard. So I'm going to click on it, and it's going to give me this window over here. And in this window, it gives me several options, Microsoft list or database. Uh, this is where you want your data to, this is where the data that you want to analyze is. We want it, it's actually coming from multiple consolidation ranges. So I'm going to click on that. And that's, I, I'm, uh, that's all I have to do because we're just doing a tip, pivot table this time. I'm going to go to next. Now under next, uh, I, it, it can create a single page field. We're going to choose to create the page fields ourselves. I think that's going to be very helpful to us so with, because we're going to create a couple of different uh, slicers for the eventual pivot table that we're going to create. So I'm going to create the page fields myself. So then I'm going to hit Next. Now it's going to open up this window here. Now it's got a couple things. It's got a range. It's got this Add, Delete, and Browse button. This tells me the ranges I've already selected. So let's focus on this part of the uh, uh, of the window right now. So what we want to do is identify the range that we want to add. Well, I'm going to click on over here, Accounts. I'm in the first tab, 2023 close. I'm going to click on Accounts, and I'm going to click on, I'm going to highlight the whole range with headers and all the data, and I'm going to simply hit Add. Now, next I'm going to add another range of data. And I don't have to do anything other than go down and click on the tab for the range of data I want to add. Now, the reason this is going to work is because each of these data range ranges is set up exactly the same. I have the accounts down here, revenue, cost of sales, distribution, SG&A, facilities, net income. I have February through December, and they're all spelled the same. If they're spelled differently, this wouldn't necessarily work. But because they're all spelled the same and the range is the same, I go to 2024 clothing. 
I simply highlight that range. It identifies it. I'm going to hit Add. Now, when I go to the third range, I want to I want you to see what the artificial intelligence inside Excel does for me. When I click on this the, down at the bottom on this 2023 driveway salt, I want you to see something. It's already selected the range for me. Based on the first two selections, it now knows where the range is, how big that range is going to be. It's going to be in, in A6 over to M12, and it knows that. So all I have to do is say Add. Click on the next one. I say Add. Add. Click on the fifth one, I say Add. Click on the sixth one, I'm going to say Add. Now all of them are added together, and, and they're in this window, and it's going to tell pivot, the pivot tables to go ahead and combine these into one pivot table. Now, the bottom part of the screen we've not looked at, it says, how many page fields do you want? We're going to actually click on two. You might sometimes just click on one, but I want to show you something, so let's click on two. And choose two of these. Now, the field one and field two are now highlighted. If I'd picked four, they would have all been highlighted, but I'm going to pick two. And so I'm going to click on the very first. You'll notice it put these in, in order. Um, it didn't put them in the same order they were at, at the bottom of the page, it puts them uh, in hierarchical order. So I've got all the 2023s alphabetical, then all the 2024s alphabetical. So for field, the first field, I'm going to click on that, and this is going to be called Winter Close. And I'm going to call this 2023 in field two. So I can put in both, I can fill in both these fields at once. I'm going to then hit, I'm going to click on the next one. I don't have to do anything. I don't have to hit enter. I just click on the next one. So now I'm going to put driveway salt. And this is also going to be 2023. Click on the next one. It's going to be snow blowers. And that's 2023. The next one down the line is close again. So I'm going to put, I mean, this time I'm going to put winter close. 2024. Next one is driveway salt, 2024. And finally, we're going to put the last one. We're going to name it, it's snowblowers, 2024. So what I'm going to recommend you always do is you always go back and check to make sure that, for instance, close is the the the, the labels are the same for each one, right? The, so so close here. I want to make sure that's winter close, and it's it's there's a space, it's capitalized, it's exactly the same. Driveway salt. So so wait, check that. Check close here, then check the other one. Exactly the same. 2023 changed to 2024. Driveway salt. That's that. I check, click on the other one. You notice this doesn't change, but the year did. That's good. Snow blowers. Snow blowers. 2023. The next one. I click on. Oh, that's different, isn't it? I got to make it the same. So let's go ahead and fix that before we tell this thing to. So, so space with a capital B, take out the other B. Now it's what it ought to be. Now what I can do is I can say next, okay? And in next, it's going to ask me where do I want to put it. I'm going to put it on a new worksheet. It'll create a new tab down here at the bottom, and we can rename that tab. So all i got to do now is say finish, and it's going to combine this all into a brand new tab, a brand new worksheet with a pivot table that includes all this information. And there it is. So this, these, this is the data for all the years combined. Now I'm going to do a few things to this. First thing, I'm going to go down here. At the bottom, I'm going to change the name of the tab. I'm going to right-click on the tab, and I'm going to call that combined. Next, I'm going to highlight my numbers, and I'm going to take out the decimal places. So I'm going to go back up to home. And over here to my number, I'm going to take out those decimal places, make them all the same thing. The other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change it to uh, accounting. But I'm going to take out these dollar signs. Okay, I don't want the dollar signs in there. Um, so we're just going to go over here, and we're going to take out the dollar signs. And, of course, zero decimal places. So I've got commas in there now. makes it look a little prettier. Now, when I click back on this table, I get my pivot table fields over here on the right. I'm going to take these two things out of filters because I want to show you how to create a... Actually, I'm going to leave one of them down there, and but I'm going to create a slicer. So first, we're going to create a slicer for um, 
for my um, uh, page one labels. And so I'm going to simply click on that and hit OK. And it's going to create a slicer here for me. And I can resize that slicer. I can move it around. I can do a lot of things with it. One of the things I want to do is I want to change the name of that. So I'm going to right click on it. I'm going to go all the way to the bottom and hit slicer settings. And up here I'm going to call that division. And I'll change it down here too. And when I hit OK, it's going to change that. So that's my division. Now I can change my year by going over here, 2023. Or I can go choose 2024. Now, I don't particularly like that because it, I just don't like the way it works. So I'm actually going to get rid of that filter. I'm going to go back over to my pivot table fields, pull it out, and I'm going to create an additional slicer. So I'll go back over up here to pivot table and analyze. I'm going to go over to about the middle and click insert slicer. I'm going to insert our page two slicer. Hit OK. And I'm going to rename it as well. And we're going to call it right click, slicer settings. I'm going to call it gear. OK. So now what I can do, I can look at, now that's combined, right? Well, now I just want to look at 2023. So that's everything for 2023. Maybe I just want to look at driveway salt for 2023. Now I can select that. I can select driveway salt and winter close. I can select all three. I can select 2024 instead. Or I could select all this just by clicking on this, this filter here with the X on it. Select all of them. So I can, I can cut this data a lot of ways using these slicers, right? So the clever name for them, I guess, is slicers. So again, we can change the name on these. We can do a lot of different things once it's in this pivot table format. You'll notice that while I changed it here, it doesn't change the name over here. That's just sort of the nature of it. It's kind of weird to develop that way. Um, so you have to sort of remember which one was which. Uh, but um, uh, I think it's, it's very helpful to you. Uh, and by the way, if you click on this, if you go over here and highlight it and click on this down arrow, It'll tell you which the items are in that particular uh, item. So I can click on this one. It tells me to, so I can relate this up here to that slicer. Well, hopefully that was helpful, and hopefully it, it explains to you how to take multiple worksheets, combine them into a single pivot table so that you can work with them. Remember, the big thing is they have to be formatted and set up the same, right? They have to have the same columns, same column headings, same row names. And if you do that, they're going to combine really easily and really quickly and efficiently for you. Hopefully that was helpful. And remember, if you like the video, click on the subscribe button below. Um, and uh, click on that notification bell. That way, when we have additional videos come out, you'll uh, get notification that there is a new video on the channel. Other than that, I hope you have a great day, and we'll see you real soon on Stuff in Excel.